New Witch of the Woods backpack and spiral notebook. Watch till the end of the video to hear more. Hello, my geeks and peeps. This is the sultry sound of Rebecca Parham, and welcome to another episode of Firebug Chats. So I was thinking to myself the other day, or rather lamenting the fact that I have so many life stories that I could tell all of you that I couldn't possibly animate them all. And some of them, of course, are not YouTube algorithm friendly. And I just ain't about putting a lot of time and energy, blood, sweat, tears, and money into a fully animated video for it to immediately be demonetized and or suppressed. So I figured maybe I can start telling some of these stories here on my second channel. I get to touch base with all of you, you get a fun story, and fewer people ask me where I've been and if I am dead. So the story I'm going to tell you contains a certain subject matter that I know from my experience with the YouTube algorithm, it will absolutely get demonetized and suppressed. In fact, I'm going to be refraining from using a certain word that will absolutely trigger the system in the hopes of flying under the radar, at least for a little bit. So instead of using that word, I'm going to be using the word antagonist, and you'll get what I mean when I start telling the story. So, many of you already know from grades 4 to 8, I went to a very small private preparatory school. And at this school, not many of my fellow students liked me. Admittedly, I was very strange and dramatic and hyper social awkward, but anyways. I had a few antagonists at this school. I made a video about one of them biting me, but this story is about a different girl and we'll call her Abigail. Now, Abigail zeroed in on me the moment she enrolled in the school, which was about seventh grade. From what I remember, the majority of her taunting was nothing too remarkable, your standard schoolyard fare. Insults, disrespect of personal space, small pushes and shoves here and there, and overall just being an antagonist. I was very upset by all of it, and I told adults at the school about it, but they did nothing to stop it. So as far as they were concerned, I just had to bear it. But one day in the seventh grade, things kind of escalated. At this school, we didn't have one big building for the middle school and high school. We had multiple small buildings that made up that part of the campus. So it was like three classrooms in this building, six in this one, the library was its own building, etc. You get it. So I was going to my next class one day, which was in this building that was basically a long porch with three classrooms in a row opening up to it. Kind of like how a motel works. And this building was elevated off the ground entirely by a tall concrete foundation about three feet high. You had to walk up some steps to get to the porch and therefore to your classroom. And also, there were no guardrails on this porch, so you could just jump down off of it. And everyone always did. Anyways, my next class was in this building. My classmates and I had been let out of our previous class a couple minutes early before the bell. So a few of us were waiting outside on this porch for the bell to ring so the class inside the room would come out and we could go in. Well, the bell rings and kids start coming out of this room and suddenly it starts getting really crowded on this porch, a lot of people trying to get by. So I back up until I am right at the edge of this porch so I can let people clear out in front of me. And as I am waiting, out of nowhere, Abigail walks by me, says, whoops, and shoves me. And I mean with purpose shoves me. She rammed her whole body into me and I fell backwards off of this porch. I was so caught off guard that I couldn't even get my feet underneath me in time, so I fell like a tree in the forest. Right off of this three foot high porch, and I landed like flat on my backpack in the dirt. It hurt. I remember it absolutely hurt, but I was also kind of like shocked and in a daze for a moment. Abigail jumped off of the porch and stood over me looking a little panicked herself because I think she knew she took it too far, and she said, are you all right? And I tell you, my face must have turned bright red from pure rage. Like, how dare you ask me if I'm all right when you purposefully did this in the first place? I scrambled to my feet, threw my backpack down as hard as I could, and I just started screaming at her. I'm so sick of you, Abigail. You're so mean to me, etc., etc. Just tears and snot streaming down my face with all these other students just standing there and watching. And get this, the thing Abigail kept yelling back at me in her defense was, you weren't supposed to fall. Like, what? What did you think was going to happen when you shoved your whole body into me? Like, gravity still works, you dingus. Some of you may wonder why I didn't punch her. And trust me, I've wondered that too. Gone over that several times with my therapist. But back then, I was such a goody two-shoes and a rule follower and a peacekeeper that I just couldn't. I couldn't muster that kind of violence within me. The best I could do was scream. And after I had screamed myself out, I picked up my backpack, went into the classroom, and sat down at my seat, still crying, still visibly angry and distraught. 
and after a minute of me sitting there wiping away my snot and tears, my science teacher came over and she asked me what was wrong. Now this woman could have a mini story time video all her own. She's definitely on my list of bad teachers I have had, but for time's sake, I'll simplify it to she didn't like me, she didn't treat me fairly compared to the other students. All right, so she asked me why I was crying, I told her what happened through the tears, and she pulled me and Abigail into the girls' restroom where she proceeded to gingerly slap her on the wrist with a mild lecture. Abigail was forced to apologize to me and the three of us went back into the classroom. No demerits, no detention, no extra homework, nothing. No consequences for attacking me. Can you see why I may not have the best memory of this teacher? When mom came to pick me up that day, apparently that teacher had already called her and told her what happened. And because Abigail apologized, big quotes around that one, she didn't think anything more needed to be done about it and it had been resolved. So that was that. Except... Somebody else decided to take the situation into her own hands. And I didn't learn about this until I was like in my 20s. But Rachel, my sister, she also went to this school and she was two grades above me. And unlike me, she was very well liked at this school and very influential. I dare say she was like a frickin' mob boss sometimes. Because when she heard that some little punk had thrown her sister off a porch, the very next day, she gathered up the girls in her class, and they all backed Abigail into the girls' restroom. And with this pack of girls behind her, Rachel told Abigail, If you ever lay a hand on my sister again, we will find you, and we will beat the crap out of you. Rachel and I didn't have the best relationship back then, but in her mind, no one was allowed to mess with her sister but her. Params stick together. And you know what? After that, Abigail never physically hurt me again. Her antagonism didn't stop entirely, but it definitely improved. So fast forward to my junior year of high school. By then, I was no longer at this prep school, I was going to the local nearby public high school. But I did maintain a friendship with a guy named Alan who was still at this prep school. No, we weren't dating, he wasn't interested in girls. But anyways. One day I went back to the prep school to pick up my younger brother David because my parents couldn't that day. And when I pulled up to the school, Abigail, who was still going there, was walking around outside and she saw me. She raced over to my driver's side window. I rolled it down and she said, Oh my gosh, Becca, I was talking to Alan the other day and he told me that you're still really mad at me about what happened on the porch. I am so sorry. I feel terrible about that. That was all my fault and I never should have done it. And you know... She said it with such sincerity and actually had the backbone to approach me and apologize that I couldn't be mad at her anymore. I accepted her apology and she seemed relieved. And all of this hatred and grudge that I had held against her just kind of dissipated. Several years later, I was living in my parents' townhouse in Orlando, Florida for the summer. I was on Facebook and saw that Abigail and her new husband were in Disney World for their honeymoon. I told them I was in town and they invited me to dinner. So yeah, in adulthood, I sat down and had a very pleasant dinner with my childhood antagonist. No anger, no grudge, all was in the past, all had been forgiven. This story stands as this constant reminder to me that people change. They grow, and you know, that's something we all have in common. We all grow. None of us are perfect, we will all do stupid things. Every single one of us will be petty or selfish or emotionally impulsive sometimes. Therefore, we all deserve a chance to learn from those mistakes and improve. Every one of us is in need of forgiveness and patience. And if someone truly makes an effort to be better, we can make the effort to forgive and move on. Thank you so much, Explainers, for listening to my story. And by the way, we just launched a new Witch of the Woods backpack. It's called the Deadly Botanicals backpack because I got to pick my five favorite deadly plants and we just put it all over this thing. It's in the style of one of those popular new Fjall Raven backpacks. It's very stylish, very trendy, and very flexible. If you're a student, you can use it for a school. If you're not, then you can use it as a fun, cool accessory to your everyday life. Now that you got a backpack, what are you going to put in it? Well, by golly, we solved that problem too. We got a new Witch of the Woods spiral notebook for you for your math notes, your science notes, your music lyrics, your poetry, your diary, or just for drawing your Sonic OCs up in the corner. But get them while they're hot. They're in the shop right now. I'll put a link in the description below. Thank you guys for all your support. Hope you enjoyed the story. It turned out a lot longer than I thought it would. 
But I'm really glad that I get to add a little more detail in these podcast style videos where I can tell more of the story without having to worry about animating it. Because you know, Toon Becca is already very busy starring in the next main channel video. I'll keep you updated on that. Thank you so much for tuning in, but now I gotta tune out. Bye! Yeah, that was my last take of the day. Uh-huh. Celluloid Club, 9 o'clock. Betty will be there too, so save her a seat. Thank you. Get a bee's knees, Gilly.